Adrian, uh, and I don't think we've seen too much of Haralem Pus either, but uh, yeah, won an RC over in mm -hmm. Europe. Mm -hmm. crushed the field obviously today with Lotus field and has, I think the best prospects of any player in the top eight here. Now we're going to get to see him. At least I'm going to get to see him play for the first time uh, here just a moment, but I really like his chances in top eight. looks like both players have a hand they like. Yeah. You, you said, I love seeing the international players show up uh, here for this tournament, right? That's one of the benefits of having it in the same city, the week ahead of the PT. You've got a lot of players who can just come in a couple days early get some practice in and some of them do pretty well. A couple of them here. So uh, Adrian uh, is, um, you mentioned it the, in a previous RC winner from Europe. Uh, so very good competitive chomps. And now you uh, top eight possibly set up for him against uh, Kiki. This is, uh, is it Phoenix on the other side? So we will see as things play out here, if Lotus field does have the advantage or if these Phoenix players, obviously they, fought through a field today that had a lot of Lotus field in it and know that they're going to encounter the matchup. We'll see if they're able to, if, if, if Kiki Dis has a plan here um, to interact with it. Yeah. And, and as we kick things off, you see Adrian on the play, I think that's gonna be a big part of the equation as he mm -hmm. slices through this top eight, assuming he is able to do so uh, being able to be on the play second seat. He's gonna be able to play against most players you play against everyone except Connor. He's going to get the choice. Yeah. Very good point. Cause that, that, that matters quite a bit as we saw uh, in some of the other matchups where if you're able to just play that Sylvan Scrying on turn two, go get your Lotus Field with no fear of what's coming from the other side, whether that's a counter spell or a really powerful turn of their own, because you're on the play, uh, really uh, just completely changes the dynamics of how things play out. Now, of course, uh, the benefit of, of a Phoenix deck is that you can hopefully interact while still advancing your game plan of getting Phoenixes into your graveyard to bring back. Yeah, it's definitely part of the equation. Of course, there is like a threshold, you know, no free spells in this format means that it's not really till turn three at the soonest you can start looking to get your mm -hmm. Phoenixes back from the graveyard. So your first two turns, you, know, you maybe play a cantrip if you need to hit lands or whatever, get your tap lands developed, play a threat, which we're going to see happen here with Ledger Shredder, and then start to really start to make stuff happen around the turn three, turn four. That's how you develop your threats. When you're on the draw against Lotus Field, they often can start looking to combo off around turn four which is going to go over the top of all the phoenix stuff you're looking to do and that's a big part of what makes this matchup bad a bunch of burn spells don't do anything no very few counter spells in the main deck and they have a similar clock that just wins the game yeah well said so that tells you what you need to be on the lookout for kiki Deese is looking at a hand here stacked with at least one phoenix he's got the ledger shredder in play so we'll have an outlet for getting things into the graveyard. His, his own game plan seems pretty set here. It's whether or not he's going to be able to stop Adrian from enacting his own. And it looks like the Lotus Field is going to hit the board here more or less right on time. The other lands go to the graveyard. And now Kiki Dees is up against it. You've got your Ledger Shredder. You've got at least a couple lands. I see a Spell Pierce in hand. But spell will you be able one. to interact quickly enough with the Lotus Field. Now, Ledger Shredder, if he can pull off a second spell, he's looking for land here. Now, being on the play, too, I mean, actually makes Spell Pierce quite a bit worse. A lot of times mm -hmm. in the Lotus Field matchup, like I said, they have kind of similar clocks, but instead of put, just putting birds into play and maybe needing another turn, uh, mm -hmm. Lotus Field just wins in the spot. A lot of times they can't necessarily do that around Spell Pierce. Now, there's not a lot of them in the Phoenix main deck. And so there's plenty of times where it's inconvenient enough that Lotus Field players will just be like, all right, look, I can't beat it. I'm just going to start comboing off because I don't know what next turn could look like. Temporal yeah. Trespass, a bunch of birds, all that kind of stuff. And so drawing your main deck spell pierce is really, really good. Obviously, especially good on the play. On the draw, could be a little bit mitigated as we see Adrian has time here to do things mm -hmm. like set up uh, cloning his Thespian stage into a Lotus Field. Yeah, really crucially for Kiki Dees, it looked like he hit uh, a land there off of that surveil trigger from uh, the Ledger Shredder, which, uh, sorry, not Surveil, um, but the Ledger Shredder trigger. That seems yeah. huge for him there. So he's able to make that land drop, continue advancing the board state here. And uh, because of that, was also able to pitch a Phoenix. And now on this turn is set up with this sleight of hand to get back uh, a Phoenix if he wants to go that route. But he may also just be digging for answers to Lotus Field comboing off. I mean, Adrian just passed the turn is planning on making an additional copy of Lotus Field and then untapping with all kinds of mana. Uh, so this is a, a really, a, you can see Kiki just going deep in the tank there, thinking about it. 
trying to find out what he can do with this set of cards to try to keep himself alive next turn because that's what Adrian is looking at as a combo kill. Well, I think part of the problem here too is he actually has both spell pierces, which is like, okay, cool. Yeah, leave those up, tag anything. Yeah. But with no real pressure, no birds back, you know, Adrian can keep passing the turn until he can maybe even feasibly pay for both. But yeah, you, know, you yeah. see an attack for Ledger Shredder, and they're kind of telegraphed by just doing nothing with your mana. It's not like there's a shortage of one and two mana plays in the Phoenix deck. So it signals to Adrian that you have at least one, maybe you have two. And, you know, mm -hmm. with no real clock, Ledger Shredder only hitting for two right now, it may not be enough just because Adrian doesn't actually have to go for it. We'll see if he wants to anyway. He's getting out mana. Well, yeah, and the missing land drops, right? So you know basically exactly what you're staring down is these the sleight of hands are going digging for lands and not finding them for Kikini. So you know that you you whatever you have to fight through, it's only two mana's worth. So it, it cannot be uh, all that many things in the deck. And like you said, you can plan around and just pay for them at this point. And yeah, looks like uh, Adrian is off to the races here attempting to uh, have a big combo turn. And it's going to come down to whether or not Kikidis can interact really enough to stop it with those spell pierces. I mean, do you think, is there enough? Can Adrian play around this? Or just, uh, I think he just did. I mean, he cast his pour over the pages with exactly four mana left up. I think this is a nod to, all right, I don't want my pour over the pages tagged by the double spell pierce. And mm -hmm. I have enough viziers in order to just cycle them uncounterably to build up that mana. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's perfect against the double spell pierce. And maybe no roads lead to Rome for mm -hmm. uh, Harlampos. <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, Adrian is certainly aware of the spell pierces and consciously playing around them. Finally getting a letter shredder trigger from the opponent, able to get some Phoenix stuff going, but it's probably just way too late at this point. Well, right. If any, anyone who's played against uh, Old Storm in Modern, right, or you remember, well, maybe you can catch them with this ritual with your counter spell. but once it doesn't work and they start getting their mana, you're just not going to stop them. So now, it once you couldn't catch that first one, now there's even more mana in the pool, even after the Emerging Old Phantom gets placed on the stack. This should do it, and we'd be off on to game two. So you talked about Lotus Field probably having a good set of uh, uh matchups in front of it looks like all going according to plan so far as magic players tend to do i do think this matchup is overstated how bad it is for phoenix uh now like i said i, I think if you're an ager and seat you're certainly happy with how the top eight broke with five copies of visit phoenix but it, there are tools and with the amount of counter spells uh that you have the option to play out of the is it phoenix deck and once you know you know the matchup and you know the cards you need to play around you can you can actually do things you, you have a chance it's not like you're just dead but it is a bad matchup and with adrian getting to start things off on the play Har haralampos drew both spell pierces still not going to be enough and uh yeah here's emergent ultimatum resolving grabbing pretty traditional pile looks like pour over the pages omniscience and i assume that is Lier, Disciple of the Drowned. And yeah, yeah he's, he's seen enough. We're going to pack it in. Game <laughs> one is really, really bad for Is It Phoenix. And uh, let's 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 take a look at the summer and get some counterspell action going, says Harar Olympus. Well, yeah, that was, a, that was exactly how you draw it up. If you're the Lotus Field player, right? You play around the counter magic without a problem uh, and on to game two. So this is uh, Is It Phoenix side. Do you think it gets... Um, significantly better i mean is this something that you feel good about from the phoenix side after board or is it uh more of a still uh, you know kind of a hit or miss even after sideboard i mean it's certainly you certainly feel way better after sideboarding you're never going to be happy about the matchup and especially with no real alpine moon presence that's not something that has been played recently used to be a big part of the equation for beating this mm -hmm. deck not really so much anymore but you still have tools you have as we can see here multiple copies of aether gust you have a narcissist reversal you have a negate you have mystical disputes you can even bring in unlicensed hearse potentially if that's something you want to reach for you can bring in young part you can bring in a whole bunch of stuff to up the clock get these red removal spells that don't really have targets outside of a boreal grazers out of your mm -hmm. deck and that improves your decks quality dramatically cheap spells that actually interact and give you time to get over the finish line with your phoenixes and not just die to the the, the turn four kill that uh the bantlos that can present so do you like the phoenix matchup uh the, the phoenix side is it uh, how often are you just trying to to run out turn three phoenixes in this area is that or is it a thing where if you go for that you're just going to die when they impact well you have, you have 
a little bit of a problem because your phoenixes are kind of bad in this matchup where your lightning axes don't have targets so getting mm -hmm. them in the graveyard starts to be a problem you have to either already have a ledger shredder going you have to have your two mana for your free the fey like you have to do more work than just spending one mana like if mm -hmm. you can find off your considers that's the absolute best case scenario but you certainly can't right. rely on that so your phoenixes do get worse your, your threats that you can play on turn two that snowball things like Young Primary or Legend Shredder, those cards, they do actually get better because you can defend them with uh, counter spells now and actually give yourself the time to get over the finish line. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, the Phoenix is on turn three. It's something you wish you could do if you could, but it's just very difficult to actually accomplish. Right. And so given that, if you're not able to pull off your big turn three, turn four is sort of the turn when Lotus Field, you have to be ready for whatever they're about to do. Uh, and it kind of naturally forces Is Phoenix into a more controlling cyborg plan. Exactly. Well, let's take a look at Adrian's list and see exactly what he has to work with in the sideboard. I wouldn't expect too much as this matchup is obviously normally quite good for the deck, but uh, sometimes you can still make a few changes and even bring in some of the anti counter spell stuff you see there for uh, control decks, things like mm -hmm. silences. We saw, you know, Dragon Lord Jamoka and like some really big threats. Uh, from Andre's side in the main deck. There's one on the sideboard here. You could reach for that as well. And those are the kinds of things that I would expect uh, Adrian to reach for, if anything. Uh, Dragon Lord especially, the life licking could just matter. You can't really <laughs> kill True. it as is it Phoenix, so you could just play it out. True. But I wouldn't expect major overhauls here on Adrian's side. Well, and that's an interesting, you know, angle you bring up from the sideboard, is that it uh, may not be about not just protecting you. It serves the purpose of protecting your combo against you know, is it Phoenix and Azorius control, but... Uh, just playing that giant body against a, a deck playing a bunch of shocks, also pretty effective. Right. And, and like to that end, like you have a couple other cards, things like the Mana Form Hellkite, not a card I've seen too much, but mm -hmm. a card that can certainly be a one card. Oh, you took out your removal. Well, now you're just dead to this thing card. And it, we've seen that come up a little bit. Like I said, we saw Andrea do that in the control matchup. You could maybe get away with it here against Is It, is it Phoenix. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I don't know that I'm as excited about that, especially, you know, when you're up a game in a pretty good matchup and you already are pretty well set up in the sideboard with some of the anti counter spell measures. I think you'd rather just reach for some of that than start trying to get cute with the creatures. Yeah, you can also see, um, we'll talk real quick about Archdruid's Charm. This is the big uh, upgrade to this deck that has come out recently. It's made it able to more consistently grab what it needs. And as it's come up multiple times today on camera, it is an instant speed effect. And that is really big. In this format, you're talking about blue-white decks that have been all over the place. We're playing mana leaks that they just got in No More Lies. So you've got that answer. You've got Is It Phoenix, which of course can play almost entirely at instant speed. It really serves a lot of value to, to, to gives it a whole new angle in terms of getting its, its namesake into play. Uh, that goes a really long way. And we'll see, of course, it didn't come up in that first game. But now that we see the Is It Phoenix player boarding into more uh, controlling cards and counter spells and stuff, having that instant speed ability uh, to interact uh, is pretty big. So we're, uh, we'll are we go down to the table here in a minute as the players are getting ready, shuffling up here. Looks like we've got a keep over on uh, Kiki Dis's side. Adrian is uh, going to give it another try here. Yeah, I think, you know, mulliganing not so much uh, problematic. I think you brought this up previously. You know, Lotus Field does a lot in terms of mana to make up for any kind of mulliganing you might do. Mm -hmm. uh, really, you just want to make sure you can get a Lotus Field going, maybe even have a little bit towards Thespian stage to overpower the mana. You're not under a super quick clock when you're playing against Is It Phoenix. It's one of your good matchups. You really just want to make sure you can actually execute your primary game plan. And, you know, if you can pick up a few other cards to be a little bit more resilient along the way, that's great. But you actually, you can just take draw steps and be happy with that. You're not going to just die out the gate really fast uh, in this matchup. And so just really making sure you can make your land drops and develop Lotus Field is going to be a huge part of the equation when Adrian's mulliganing. Yeah, it's, that's and, and I think this might be down to five. So... It, it is a decision process that he's, he's working through. And if he runs it back uh, for the Pro Tour, it's a good experience to have. It looks like we've got a decision. Cards put on the bottom. Here we go. Slide of hand to begin things. Yeah, good start. Uh, sometimes you'll see, uh, is it Phoenix players just kind of hold their cantrips? If you have something like a young Pyromancer and you want to be able to make tokens and you already have your land drops and everything you could want rolled up. Uh, Playing the cantrip on, on turn one doesn't necessarily indicate any of that stuff to be true or not true. You kind of do want to also just get cards in your graveyard for things like Treasure Cruise, Triple Trespass, and the like. But, you know, maybe something to pay attention to if you're looking for a little bit more nuance in how the turn one plays out for Is It Phoenix, given that Kikidis has a Steam Vents in his hand. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and that looked like, uh, I may be wrong here, it looked like we might have had a, a sighting of a new card there. Surveil Land, perhaps, making its way. Yeah, a little Hedge Mage, a one of in Adrian's deck list, the full art version there. Uh, Surveil Land's making a big splash in the formats where you can search them up with your other lands. Uh, maybe a little less impactful when you can't, but we do have things like Sylvan Scrying that if you're yeah. just drawing dead and you draw <laughs> Sylvan Scrying, you already have mana, maybe you can have this thing. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, also, they're just they're just fun, right? These are really cool. They're it's neat when <laughs> um, mana fixing land, just a real basic mana fixing land, can actually make an impact in a format. Oh, but that's what's happened. I you also have lived the dream in modern or whatever of surveilling your reanimation target into the graveyard with your land, with your fetch land. Pretty good. Oh yeah, sure. And I mean, you know, maybe if you want to reach from in Phoenix, but Phoenix is in the yard. You probably should know your lands enter and tap. But you're right, they're sweet, and there's <laughs> something to think about no matter who you are and where you stand. It looks like no turn three play from Kiki just yet. Impulse. Spell Pierce. Yeah, you talked about a much slower game. Looks like that's what we have so far. Yeah, I mean, if you're Kikidis and you see an impulse, like there was no Sylvan scrying. And if you're relying on impulse to find Lotus Field, that's something you can actually stop. Maybe you're interested in it, but this is kind of mm -hmm. the punish, right? If it's bait, if you can use the impulse as bait, whatever that looks like, and you actually have your Sylvan scrying dialed up, like pretend Adrian had both of those in his hand last turn. He could have just played Sylvan scrying to grab it, but then that runs face first into a Spell Pierce. So mm -hmm. what you could do instead is uh exactly what he did there which is kind of use your impulses base then untap sylvan scrying and then you get the guaranteed lotus field and that is how that played out yeah and uh, the the end result of all of that is the key card the lotus field in play for adrian here that's what i mean that's what he needs and he's under again no pressure i, I it looks like at least a phoenix in the yard uh but kiki just needs to get things going here needs to try to turn up the pressure somehow just going to start with another prankster adventure, though. Yeah, free the fae. And hits another bird. I mean, as far as what you can ask of your free the fae is hitting a bird and hitting a one-mana spell. That's about the best it could be. And I think he's done that twice. That so is certainly a good sequence here for Kikidus. Yeah, so here we go. Another sleight of hand. Thinking about what he wants to do here. One top, one bottom. Treasure cruise the pickup. Yeah, we have a pathway to cast it. That's uh Two birds at least. That was key. Getting the land. Here we go. Do we have another spell? We do. It's a treasure cruise. Well, that's pretty good as a final spell, I would say. Yeah, and I, I mentioned, I mean, this is turn four for Kiki Dis, right? So we're able to get mm -hmm. going with two birds. Now, obviously, Adrian's not dead, but Adrian also only has a lotus field. He kind of wants another turn to right. at least to develop a Thespian stage, assuming he has one, in mm -hmm. order to really start to combo off. And with this card refill from Treasure Cruise and the two Arclight Phoenixes coming back. There's Clock, and there might be some counter spells hidden away as well. Great spot if you're Kiki Dis and a big... It shows how much the play matters in this matchup. You're absolutely right, because that was... I mean, that's that was it, right? That was... If, if he's not able to put together something right there and just passes back, well, then has, uh, Adrian's just looking at Lotus Field, able to set up Lotus Field, able to attempt a combo if he even wants to, but he's under no pressure to. Uh, but yeah, Kiki Dis was able to... Um, ending it in a treasure cruise, by the way, is, is the, the perfect ender because now you're just completely stocked up to untap with your birds. And if you're, if you, you know, if you're not dead this turn to Adrian, which you're not going to be, you're going to have a grip full of spells to interact from here. Yeah, we're just the vizier. Deploying from, vizier from certainly speaks to needing more. And mm -hmm. with not, that's not even a thespian stage. I mean, that's just one more, one more use. Uh, not really where you want to be if you're an Adrian fan. Now, he's already up a game, so might already be doing some game three uh, considerations. And it, it is worth noting, that, again, deploying these Viziers happens a lot more commonly in the sideboard games when mm -hmm. you would expect these interactive decks to have shaved a lot of their creature removal. Now, sometimes they don't cut all for moments like this, but you, it's no matter what, it's going to be pretty heavily trimmed. And uh, so this Vizier pretty safe against creature removal, but you are under a clock in the air. All right, so Kiki just looking at his hand, trying to figure out where he wants to go from here. We've cast one okay. spell, play a land. The second spell coming down. Prismari. Ooh, Prismari command. command, okay. I think uh, two damage. Looks, I mean, we're pointing at the Vizier. I assume that's two damage to the Vizier and make a treasure? Makes it looks like a treasure token. Okay. So that would speak to an expensive third spell? No, third spell. That should have had to go upstairs, right? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe we missed uh, exactly what happened there. Maybe they th they thought better of it. Uh, I'm not sure. The end result here is it looks like Kikidis is going to be having two mana if that's a treasure token. Uh, but Adrian is alive at eight life and untapping with a chance to go for it. Yeah, we got some. I mean, we have Vizier. It's active. We have Lotus Field. I mean, you don't have a second Lotus Field, but this is close to as good as it gets. We can make one this turn with Sylvan Scrying, which we're going for right now. If we make one with Thespian Stage, like with Thespian Stage, yeah. and have Stirrings left over, I don't know that we have the mana for that. We have two floating right now. Well, so there now comes we have none floating. This, yeah, there comes the stage. I spotted a a, a Spell Pierce in Kiki Dis's hand, so this is going to hit an inflection point here sooner rather than later, uh, depending on what spell Kiki Dish chooses to fight over. Yeah, I mean, the choke point on mana is certainly coming soon, but it looks like we're choosing not to do anything. Adrian believing himself safe and the two damage. Wow, now that's here. interesting. Just develops the Lotus Field off the Thespian Sage, passes back at eight life, betting that the two Phoenixes aren't going to kill him, but here comes the old hard cast Phoenix. Well, three will. <laughs> three definitely will. We'll see if Adrian has anything to say about that. It does not. Snare right. Thopter mode gets it done for game number two for Kikidus. All right. Well, they fought back. It's if Lotus Field is going to be tearing through this entire top eight field, it's going to have to start with a game three against is it Phoenix from Kikidus? This has been a, a good matchup, right? You you talked about the ways it would need to go for the Phoenix player to win and how important the play draw was. And that's a, it's certainly what that uh what it looked like there. An important piece of the puzzle and something I mentioned when they were sideboarding is getting your Phoenixes in the graveyard is hard, but if you can do it, then it's easy to set up pressure backed up by cheap counter spells. That is what Kikidis was able to do. Having mm -hmm. three copies of free the fave resolve two of them hit Phoenixes. That's exactly where you want to be found spells for his trouble as well was able to really set up the mixture of Phoenixes plus counter spell backup that you want to see if you're going to be able to flip the script on this matchup. Now, obviously things get harder there. You know, yes. Adrian was on a mulligan things really broke your way so uh you know you have to get lucky in some spots but you always have to get lucky to win a tournament and kiki is certainly setting himself up to do that with the way he has navigated these games let's see if we want to take a quick look at the decks before we move into game number three one more look at adrian's deck list although i suspect we may see it quite a bit uh <laughs> i can't I can't imagine on the play you want to make too many changes. Maybe we saw Darcet's reversal in his hand at the end of the game. Maybe you don't mm -hmm. reach for something like that when you're on the draw. Execute your primary game plan a little bit more. But, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't expect heavy changes from him to begin with. And uh, mostly just running back what he's got uh, for game number three and hope that oh. just your primary game plan is good enough. Yeah, he was right on the verge that game, even after the mulligan, right? So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that can go away uh, uh, the, the his way just with a normal flow of the game. But looking over to the other side uh, for Kiki this on, on Is It Phoenix, now you're, you've are you picked up a game. Good job. You got your side. You picked up your cyborg game. But now you've got to go on the draw and do the same thing. What is the key to trying to try to, you know, nabbing a game away uh, when you're when you're going to be under the pressure? Is it about the Phoenixes? Is it about um, the control spells? What Now that you have to try to, to take one on the draw. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be about the mixture. And, and to that end, you, maybe you can actually make some changes here. This is something I'm going to highlight. But mm -hmm. before you know, finishing the point, you need yeah. to find something. It doesn't matter if it's Phoenixes. It doesn't matter if it's a big Ledger Shredder you trigger a bunch of times. You need a threat that can actually close the game, whatever, two, three attacks, ideally. And mm -hmm. multiple Phoenixes do that. We saw that happen there in game two. A big Ledger Shredder backed up by the Phoenix or something can also do that. But you need to assemble a clock, and that can be backed up by some of your counter spells that can that can expire. Spell pierces, things of that ilk, mystical disputes, like they, they expire, but you don't need them forever. You just need them to work for that window that you have your clock established. Mm -hmm. And But it's about finding that mixture. And a card that I kind of want to highlight a little bit before we move into game number three is Fable the Mirror Breaker. Might be a card I'd be interested in here in game number three. Both accelerating your mana and and helping you develop that mixture is something that could add to your plan here in game three on the draw where you know you're going to have to rely on your interaction a little bit more. No, that's a great point because every part of that um, saga is relevant. I mean, just like it always is, but maybe especially so in this matchup, like there was a, a two damage difference there, right? In the last game, Adrian was an eight. He passed the turn back, staring down six power of Phoenix. He thought he was safe. Well, that two damage could be the difference. So uh, there, there's a lot that comes into play there for sure. Uh, but here we go. Right on time. Turn two. Sylvan scrying for Adrian. That's going to pick up 
the Lotus Field, and just like that, Kikidis is um, or picking up what looks like a uh, another Thespian stage. Uh, but just like he, that, Kikidis having the Lotus the Field rolled up, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a good, not what, you, first stage. not what you want to see. <laughs> well, you, you, you uh, have to set the first day. stage to your Lotus Field ETB. And so you're going to want the second one to actually copy. So if you have one already dialed up in hand, you're mm-hmm. grabbing a second best me stage actually makes a lot of sense here. All right. Kiki is just passing the turn back. No two mana play. <laughs> We've seen this with free the Fey previously, and it's just going to be a Lotus field. No other plays for Adrian. Yep. So uh, yeah, able to do the free the Fey thing found in a gate worse face up. Okay. Yeah. And no, Phoenixes hitting the yard. Looks like one in hand. Need to find a way to pitch that if he really wants. But uh, all right. Bull, first first uh, hurdle cleared there for Adrian. You've got Lotus Field in play. You've got no Phoenixes in the yard. So far, so good. Yeah, and I think the choice, there's actually an Aether Gust here. I think there's a choice between Aether Gust, Negate. I can't see what the third card is, or like the fourth card on the bottom is mm-hmm. that well. Okay, good. Chooses the Negate. Well, a face-up counter spell means that, you know, two mana, you know, you, you can hide your other stuff a little bit better because if you hold up two mana, you know, there's at least a level zero of what Adrian's mm-hmm. going to be facing down, but you still don't have a clock established. I think Kiki just might be looking for a third land here too. Yeah. That'd be Splited. a major, hurt, major stumbling block if he doesn't have it. Oh, he does. That's a, we've got a double face. That's the pathway. Okay. So yeah, third really, land deployed, really. negate up. We might be here for a bit with that negate. <laughs> yeah, in yeah hand that's my notice. brush as well. We're just yeah. holding up mana, holding up our free the phase, which is a nice use of two mana if you don't have to use the negate. But Adrian, I mean, already kind of has a plan for this turn, right? Yeah, just face up. Yeah. Let's make a, a second Lotus Field. And even though Kikinis does have a free the fade to use, there's still no clock in play. We watched this game earlier, right? We watched uh, mm-hmm. a Lotus Field just... Play out against, in that case, it was Azorius Control. But if you don't do anything, they just have the mana to slam down and draw Mocha and combo you in the same turn. So, yeah, Kiki just needs to get something going. He needs to find a way to get those Phoenixes in his hand into the graveyard. And it's just on rails right now for Adrian. Something like a Ledger Shredder would be a really nice pickup to be able to actually get these things in the graveyard. And we, I think we see three in hand with no way to get rid of them. Phoenix Flooded. Phoenix flooded indeed. Hey, here's where Fable would be great. Although now I think it'd be way too late to the party with two facing down two Lotus fields. You need to have your interaction up for basically the rest of the game. I'd imagine until you cast it or whatever, but then Adrian, once again, just choose not to cast anything. No clock, no problem. All right. Well said. Now there are two Lotus fields. Adrian considering his options. Does he want to go for it? Does he just want to, uh, Pass the turn back, continue setting up. I imagine it depends on whether or not there's another land here that it becomes relevant. Uh, Kiki just looks like the full seven in hand, so maybe uh, hand size is coming into play here for those Phoenixes. You never know. Sure, that's a way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't great. And I, honestly, if that's like a real-ish plan to consider, maybe Adrian is running something into a counterspell. Right, oh, yeah. That can't be countered. How about that, that one? Doesn't. How about that one? <laughs> no, that one, doesn't, no, that one doesn't get countered. That, that's not that one. <laughs> Man, Dramoka has looked incredible every time we've seen it on the stack. It sure has. And uh, in this case, well, you know what? This time it's slightly less good. <laughs> it runs into an ether gust, but that doesn't fundamentally change anything, does it? Nope. Aaron says, sure, on top, face up, don't get her. I'll <laughs> cast it again. Guess what's happening next turn? <laughs> Oh, I mean, maybe awesome. if Kiki Dis is making land drops there, I, it, look, I as someone I've played a fair amount of Ether Gust myself, and it's much better in tempo decks, uh, you know, to use a, a banned word there in Magic. But uh, yeah, banned <laughs> in tempo decks, uh, it's better there than perhaps when it's just kind of slowing it down by a turn, but you're not really doing anything either without a land drop to to advance his own board. Say that Dramoka is just kind of come right back down. Look, tempo's not banned in this booth. It's pretty. Easy. <laughs> you got. You got expiring interaction backed up by a clock that's it that's it it's the whole recipe <laughs> and uh right now we have the expiring interaction for sure what we don't have is the clock and this i mean this is exactly the woe that i was i mean i was referring to is just getting these birds in the yard is so difficult now what we can do here is we can treasure cruise and then we can oh yeah here we go get some oracle text on dragon lord Jermoka. yeah that thing says lifelink 
And if you don't have a way to get rid of that, no matter how many birds you put in play, attacking is not going to be a recipe for success. Tough yeah. spot. That is a that is sure. a good point. And it, it's got to be brutal if you kiki this, just looking at like a hand of all your best spells and knowing that none of them are uh, what you need right now. <laughs> Yeah. That said, what what does he want to do? Is the plan? I mean, now we have a ledger shredder. Mm -hmm. Adrian's that's, gonna I mean, take that's where it starts. a turn to deploy the the Dramoka. So maybe you have a small window here to try to set up um some birds in your graveyard. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like maybe you can get there by discarding the hand size for one of them or two of them. Uh yeah, I do think we want to develop a threat, although I don't know how much we can do that and hold up any interaction, although interaction is just not going to work if Dramoka mm -hmm. resolves. But mm -hmm. Dramoka is right now still Adrian's entire turn. So if right. we can, you know, we see Lightning Axe is a couple left in, very heads up by Kiki, this is something some players might not do. You kind of have to do because of the presence of Dragon Lord Dramoka in the current Lotus Field builds. And mm -hmm. uh, if you can find one, maybe two of those, we actually have a great turn. We can kill Dramoka pitching two birds, and then we're off to the races. That'd be a great exchange for a Kiki Disc, but needs to find the, the tools to make that actually come to fruition. And let's Lightning Axe deals five damage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need two of them. Yeah, yeah. So if he, if he, it's a perfect way to get going if he's got it. To, to answer, it's not the cleanest answer to Dramoka, right? But you don't have clean answers to Dramoka. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I would argue there's not very many clean answers to Dramoka. Yeah. <laughs> if, they, if there are, they cost a million. We've seen cards like Summary Dismissal. Summary Dismissal, like yeah. Four mana counterspell. All right. Well, here we go. Dramoka in play. Two mana You're floating. On. Is it go time now? He, well, that's, he's, he's thinking about it. Is that a hidden strings? I think it is hidden strings. Okay. Looks like they were quickly untapping wow. both lotus fields. Yeah, so yeah, you just might not get it. You might not get a chance. Yeah. We have two viziers that was able to make enough mana to float some mana in order to really get things started after Jermoke is in play and not even give Kikidis a chance to uh, <laughs> try to assemble it, a kill for it's it. It's wild how good it's been it, it, without without pressure. It's just the the lotus field players are just able to sit here and just wait on it, wait on it, get it sent to the top of their library, get it sent two cards down from their library from a Teferi. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, we're at reveal our hand stage. I think that's a <laughs> Lier there, and so we just have enough cards to to really navigate. There through. we go. And yeah, that's going to be enough All to right. do it. <laughs> hey, Jeez, Adrian Dragon Lord Dramoka moves on here in the quarterfinals of the NRG Champion Series Top Eight in Chicago. Does well, crushes an RC a few months ago in Europe. Comes over to the United States, hits this up on his way to the Pro Tour. Now into the top eight of the NRG series. Now through the quarterfinals, looking like the matchup played out exactly how Drake described it, wanting to go from the Lotus Field player side. Now he's set up for the semifinals. Yeah, I, I think that the play draw, I can't understand how much that that yeah. matters. Now in that matchup, Dragon Lord Dramoka was so powerful that it, I don't think play draw actually mattered. Just drawing that card and playing yeah. it. You know, people aren't ready for it. And we've seen that just be the case over and over again. You mentioned it. It's just been such a dominant performance of just that card. As soon as you put it in play, you win the game on the spot. There's going to have to be some adaptation by players that mm -hmm. are just trying to combat Lotus Field with counter magic uh, against that card because of just its strength. But uh, we'll see exactly if players can figure it out before Adrian wins this whole tournament. We're going to be going live into our backup match. So this is not time shifted. This is happening live as we speak between some NRG mainstays. Connor, Will Kruger, players we have seen a ton on this series and a mess of a board state. <laughs> that is... um. All right, let's start breaking this down very uh, very slowly here. We've got two sure. phoenixes on one side, three fairies on one side, uh, and on the other side, we've got, oh, phoenixes and fairies. What do you know? I think we have a crazy stack going on involving a treasure cruise and a Narset's reversal on the treasure cruise. Free the fame response. That got disputed. We opted okay. in response. We have a ledger shredder trigger. Yeah, there's just uh, there's so much. But I this, appreciate this you on, uh, yeah, on yeah. cruise. Is Unwinding crazy. the clock for us here, just taking us back in time. Drake, this was a, a stack. You're breaking it down. So here we go. It looks like uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is up that uh, remembering what's up, what's where, pointing our cards all over the place. Get some of <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we're just playing over here. They're rebuilding the stack while we are rebuilding the yeah. stack. Yeah, this is looking like uh, some directed chaos orb action. <laughs> sure.
Sure. Wow, that's you're dating yourself a little with that one. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, I've never, you know, I've, I don't even think I've ever held a Chaos Orb, much less played against one or played with one. It's a trip, that's for sure. I believe you. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So counters have started to go. There's the reversal. Well, Will's tapped out, and assuming, I mean, that treasure is on the stack, we're in Connor's turn. He just got yeah. to discard a bird to the connive. That's three birds in the yard. That's a lot of pressure. That's uh four boards four four bird special right there, but Will got five blockers. So uh, uh huh. what I mean, a the legend what an interesting the game we stumbled air. on into. <laughs> yeah, this is just this is a big mess. Uh so Connor has all four of his birds. I don't know what the deck count is, but I think when when I start seeing all four Arclight Phoenixes involved, I start wondering what the deck size is because that starts oh, to be the thing okay. that, that might yeah. come into question here a little bit. Well, that's an angle for, for sure. Um, we've seen, yeah, yeah. We, there's a ton in play. There's a bunch that's been exiled. Uh, this will make all four Phoenixes for Connor. Looks like three Phoenixes for Will are viewable from here. Um, is that is that something that is does that come up in these at Phoenix Mirror? Is that something that you you encounter regularly or even have to really consider as you're going through it? Oh, sure. I, I think first person to find more birds definitely matters because if you're talking mm -hmm. about just bringing them back over and over again, whoever is getting ahead on damage every time that happens mm -hmm. is getting ahead in the game for obvious reasons. But there's a ton that can add to the mixture. The actual trump card, if you're talking about this matchup, is always going to be the temporal trespass. Anytime mm -hmm. you can set up a big attack with your birds that maybe trades off, maybe not. And then you can set up a temporal trespass turn in order to untap, get your birds again, and maybe even activate Hall and do stuff like that. That's really how you can break this matchup wide open, is finding your temporal trespass first. But exchanges like this matter. We see Connor has more birds than Will, and yeah. is going to actually be able to push damage. Yeah, wins the bird battle there, and now with the dust settled, and we came in when everything was, was, was a mess, it's slightly calmed down now but it, it's resolved with will at seven life connor at 17 life with access to more birds in the yard more birds in play and still uh looks like another dig with a sleight of hand here to round out his turn he'll ship it back to will who's going to need a really big turn here and i can't I, I i can't tell how exactly how many cards he has in hand to, to start bringing back his own phoenixes uh, but that seems like the first or treasure step. Bruce was at least three. I can tell you that. Yeah, that's the first step is going to be getting to your three spells. Make sure you have access to those birds so you're not just dead when Connor untaps. There's Ledger Shredders. There's a second Ledger Shredder, sure. Okay, yeah. All right. Those are good blockers for Arclight Phoenixes. I mean, so once again, the name of this game, if you're talking about Will, if he can settle this up and then follow up with Temporal Trespass, right, it's just like you're nearly yeah. just winning the game on the spot, even though he's so far behind. It's going to be whichever player, you know, hasn't cast Temporal Trespass or whatever, that's the play. That's what they're looking for. That's what they want to find and mm -hmm. just try to close the game out like that. And that's part of what makes Narset's Reversal such a important card in mm -hmm. the sideboard of this matchup. We saw mm -hmm. it land against the Treasure Cruise, which was impactful, but if you can land it against Temporal Trespass, it's lights out. Yeah, especially because the typical trespass player will have spent their entire turn setting up for their extra turn that you then and then you just get two turns in a row them. instead. But <laughs> that's pretty pretty good. Pretty good. Well, and a lot of times, right? If you, you return typical trespass to their hand, well, a lot of times you just return a spell to the hand of Narcissus Reversal. Maybe they recast it or whatever. But having to to re delve a bunch of cards is not trivial at all. Yeah, eight's a big number. Eight's a big number. Three blue is another big number. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's very taxing to get your uh, trespass reversal beyond just the copy, which is obviously the most difficult part of things. Right. Now I can't. I didn't get a great look at Will's hand. I saw a lot of spells. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> thinking about how to deploy them. Were that just some prankster prankster beats? Not clear. Attacked with the... Yeah, just the pranksters. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well. I, 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 I don't know that that's a good sign. Um, it's, uh, he is at a, a very clear bird disadvantage at the moment, but all it takes is one surveil trigger. I, I keep saying surveil. With Connor one, wants to play one, that game. Um, He's like, I, I got it ahead on board. and Let's just beat down, huh? Yeah, so <laughs> all it takes is one connive trigger to grow those, those, shredger, those ledger shredders Big enough to, to get really good on blocking duty, but that's not what's happening here. 
We had a lot of spells left over. I think there's another Narset's reversal for Will. Might be just trying to keep from dying. Looks like Odawara pulled to the front. Maybe we're going to Odawara the Shredder. Okay, sure. Okay. Leaving him with one mana open. After that, how does Connor want to interact with this? It's it's pretty difficult to interact with an Odawara bounce. That's for sure. It doesn't, uh, it, it, you know, it's not a traditional spell in that sense. Yeah, not not something that's easy to interact with. I'd be surprised if he chooses to really do anything except, yeah, maybe try to capitalize yeah. on his own connive before it happens. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit more value. Okay. Right. Ottawara yes. still on the stack. One Ledger Shredder down here. Yeah, that's just going to happen. Okay. Okay, damage resolves. The, the board has done nothing but clear up since we've got here. We're the... <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. That was a mess. Good work. Good work, Drake. Yeah, good job. Everybody involved. I just want a round of applause. <laughs> I mean, a card I want to highlight. Oh, it's Temporal Trespass from Connor. <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> well, oh. oh, no, no, no reversal up from Will. Yeah, I mean, this is why. This is what Connor was trying to set up. Will tapped below two mana. Uh -huh. That means that the coast is clear for not getting Narset's reversal to just die to the Trespass. Obviously, you can pay for Spellpierce and things of that like as well. Dispute as well. This one's just going to work. And Hearst follow up to answer the Phoenixes. That's oh, everything's coming up, Connor. Well, and he needed a if he did. We don't know how many spells he has in hand. I guess he he maybe needed a seventh point of damage, and that'll provide it if uh, he can then crew it. Well, with, we have uh, with that prankster Paul. over there. We have might just have the spells it. anyways, and it won't matter. But uh, Connor with a window to 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 end the game here, and uh, seems like he's uh, just planning out how he wants to do that. I believe that's true. I think this is free the Fey Narset's reversal. So once again, we, we saw this happen previously. Yeah, I was going to extend it. Being able yeah. to counter your own spells with things like Narset's reversal in order to guarantee three spells from uh, to get your birds back and guarantee the kill for Connor. Going to mean that he's going to advance to the semifinals. An impressive sequence from Connor. And like I said, Temporal Trespass is the trump card. And that was certainly the case there for Connor Mullaly. Winning game number three against Will Kruger. Again, two energy mainstays and friends as far as uh, I'm still aware. <laughs> well, no, you, you nailed it. That was the key card in the match. If you highlighted it, it came down to it. Might not be the last time we have one come down to it. But let's take a look at our top eight bracket. We have the quarterfinals wrapped up, advancing. Matthew Hoey on Is It Phoenix, Connor Morali on Is It Phoenix, Adrian Tasset on Lotus Field, and Max Komanowski on, you guessed it, Is It Phoenix. So <laughs> our, our heroes here to try to fight against the Is It Phoenix sex, five of them that made the top eight. Lotus Field, if you want to call that a hero. Boros Convoke, <laughs> Mono White Humans. Two of them uh, now down. And we'll move into a top four with three Phoenix and Adrian. <laughs> and Adrian, who I think is licking his chops at a full <laughs> top four of all is it Phoenix. Got to be excited about his prospects. And the only person that can be on the play over him is Connor, who is still in the tournament. So that might be a dynamic that comes up. A good point. We'll see here very, very shortly. I believe we're going to take a very brief break before we get started here for top four. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be bringing you the semifinals very quickly. Do not go anywhere.